Dear friends, dear netizens, we are airing from CGTN, and we're here at the Museum of the War of Chinese People's Resistance Against the Japanese Aggression. I'm Su Yuting, and I'm very pleased to be with you at today's program because this year marks the 75th anniversary of the victory of the world's anti-fascist war. Today's program will last for one hour. To give you wonderful remarks, we have invited the Zhu Ning commentator at the museum. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining CGTN. Today's program will last for one hour, and you will give us a detailed introduction, right? Yes. As the host mentioned, this year marks the uh, 75th anniversary of the victory of the world's anti-fascist war, and our museum is the only one that has a comprehensive reflection of this war. And actually, one hour is not enough to cover all of our stuff here, uh, but I will choose some important parts. So just some heads up, during the one hour's program, our commentator will talk in Chinese. Well, we have also provided simultaneous translation services in English. President Xi Jinping once said that history is the best textbook, and it can also sober our mind. We have to attach great importance to history, learn from history, and the museum here can. Uh, actually offer a lot of wisdom that can help us look back to the past and look forward to the future. So at this special occasion of the 75th anniversary of the victory of the world's anti-fascist war, and also while we are uh, trying to fight the war against uh, COVID-19, we are here to tour around the museum. And I think this tour means a lot because all the peoples need to remember the history and the war against the Japanese aggression also has great significance in our history. Okay. I'll give the floor to our commentator, Juning. We are here at the lobby of the museum. Behind me is a group of reliefs. It is named Great Wall of Flesh and the Blood. It features six groups of pictures and different groups of people that made contribution during the war. Uh, some of the people are uh, soldiers, and some are communist uh, party members, some are uh, peasants, some students. And actually, we can see from uh, the reliefs that the Chinese people then were trying to build our new Great Wall with our flesh and blood. OK, let's start our tour. Here is the theme of the exhibition called Great he Victory and Historical Contributions. The exhibition was started in 2015 to celebrate the 70th anniversary of our victory against uh, uh, Japanese aggression. So the forward is also in Chinese and English. Does that mean a lot of foreign visitors also come here? Yes. Because in our exhibition, we also demonstrated how the Chinese people have contributed to the world's uh, war, uh, the world's victory in the anti fascist war. Now we are here at part one of the exhibition. Here there is a forest and also um, a snow. Uh, actually, it points to northeast China, and our fight there started with September 18th incident. Uh, we used to phrase our struggle then as eight-year struggle, but 
actually that wasn't accurate. Our struggle lasted for 14 years from 1931 to 1941, while well, the eight-year struggle uh, started from 1937. Uh, let me briefly talk about the September 18th incident. Uh, Japanese seized the privileges of uh, former uh, of Russia in China. So. In Shenyang city, Liaoning province, the Japanese people bombed the railways of China and then they, uh, they lied that the Chinese people destroyed the railways and then started a skirmish. And the nationalist government then adopted a non-resistance policy. So the city was quickly taken by the Japanese army. And you can see on September 19th, the Japanese occupied Shenyang. And this is their armored vehicles uh, on the streets of Shenyang. Later, they invaded Jilin and Qixihar. Those are pictures of their invasion. So uh, you are showing us the history of how the Japanese army occupied Northeast China, right? Yes. The nationalist government then had high hopes on the League of Nations, hoping they can help us resolve the dispute between China and uh, Japan. But actually, the League of Nations had no power then, so it uh, cannot give sanctions to the Japanese. And here we can see a list of declarations from the Communist Party at that time, uh, which called for the Chinese people to rise up to the aggression of the Japanese and to eliminate them from our territory. And here there were some special articles I would like to uh, talk about. And this is a piece of towel, and there are a lot of characters on it. Uh, after the war started in China, a student, a foreign student, was uh, very angry at the Japanese aggression. And the Japanese people uh, put him into custody. This student was enraged. He uh, recorded his experience on this towel. and. Uh, left Japan after uh, the custody. He also joined um, an, a number of fights against the Japanese. So basically on this towel, we can see a record of this uh, student. Uh, his vows. After the September 18th incident, Japan seized the Northeast China and to cover the facts, they set up a puppet um, government in Northeast China. Uh, Puyi, the last emperor of Qing dynasty, was taken to Northeast China. He was persuaded because the Japanese people uh, told him that they would help him restore uh, his sovereignty. And this is the statement of him being enthroned. He was a puppet then, and the powers were in the hands of the Japanese army. OK, let, let's take a closer look at the currency issued by the Japanese during their occupation. So um, on the paper note, we can see Confucius, and uh, also Mencius, and the uh, god of fortune. So those are figures that are closely connected to Chinese tradition. After the September 18th incident, the Communist Party uh, led uh, resistant forces, and uh, we can see Yang Jingyu and Zhao Yiman. 
outstanding leaders of the forces here. Uh, in Northeast China, the winter is very long and cold, so they had wrenching moments of fighting against uh, the Japanese. In 1937, uh, the number of uh, resistance reached uh, 30,000 uh, in soldiers led by the Communist Party of China. So uh, they were facing Japanese army with uh, a much larger number. Yang Jingyu was sieged by Japanese army. He had no food at all and had to eat the bark of trees. And even the enemies were very respectful of him. After 1940, our soldiers, the resistant forces, uh, retreated within the territory of former Soviet Union. They received the training there and also sent some reconnaissance forces into the territory of Northeast China. So here we can see a picture of our soldiers together with a former Soviet Union staff. So it wasn't easy for them to fight the Japanese, right? Yes. The winter of Northeast China is very cold. And uh, during the war, they didn't have very good infrastructure. They don't have heating services. And our soldiers lived uh, in the mountains and forests. And this part, we'll have a look at the Japanese invasion into uh, North China. They were not satisfactory with their uh, success, so in, they invaded Manchuria, Zhehe, and Suiyuan provinces, which are in the vicinity of the Great Wall. And they equal to the territory of um, Inner Mongolia and Hebei province nowadays. Resistance then was against the non-resistance policy adopted by uh, Chiang Kai-shen, uh, the head of Kuomintang. And Japan, through several agreements, seized the majority of territories in North China. And they decided that only uh, one army can be kept in the garrison uh, for the Chinese. And later, the December 9th movement broke out. Uh, university students, they went to the streets, and they had speeches to rally the common people. And this is a picture showing them on the street giving speeches. Uh, in uh, middle school history textbooks, we had uh, such account of how they went to the street and couldn't uh, continue their study in schools. Yeah, the people then were infuriated since the, the calming down wasn't going to fight against the, the Japanese. In 1935, on August 1st, the Communist Party issued a declaration uh, calling for the end of uh, civil war and to fight the Japanese. And later, more declarations and statements came.
就发生了七七卢沟桥事件。啊，我们下面就要看到的是展览的第二部分，啊，叫做。时间，我们所在的位置也离卢沟桥非常近，对吧？呃，是的，是的。抗战馆建在这个宛平城里啊，原因就是在这里啊、呃，当年爆发了七七事变。我们这边有一张地，呃，这个不是地图啊，这一张照片，这是上世纪三十年代北平卢沟桥的航拍图，呃，这个航拍照。我们中间可以看到这个宛平城哈、啊，呃，这是宛平城，当然这个它不是上北下南，大家注意啊，这个是宛平城的西门，然后上方是东门，啊。Here we can see the west gate and also the, the east gate, of the county seat of Wanping. Yeah, today we entered the city from the west gate of Wanping. Wanping was established in the Ming Dynasty. Uh, let me briefly talk about the history then. The Japanese army that started the aggression against Wanping didn't come to China in 1937. On July 7, 1937, the Japanese army had a military drill in the vicinity of Wanping. Actually, they had many such drills. Why did they choose this location for military drill? Because it's a significant section alongside the railway. The purpose of their drill is to seize Wanping and the Marco Polo Bridge or the Lugo Bridge. Uh, on July 7th, they declared that, they claimed that uh, a Ch Japanese soldier disappeared into the county seat of Wanping. So the Japanese army insisted on going inside the city. So uh, Chinese people refused their request. And in the morning, around 5 o'clock in the morning of July 8th, the Japanese attacked the county seat of Wanping. So it was an excuse for the Japanese, yes. Uh, we named the incident as July 7th incident, but actually the war broke out on July 8th. After the war broke out, the Communist Party issued another statement calling for resistance against the Japanese aggression. Some construction are underway, so I'll briefly show you the history then. In less than one month, the Japanese seized Beiping and Tianjin. And the Kuomintang and the Communist Party officially started their uh, cooperation. Uh, right after the start of cooperation, the Eighth Route Army, uh, led by the Communist Party, had victory in Pingxingguan. They utilized the vantage point of Pingxingguan and uh, uh, attacked more than 1,000 Japanese soldiers, annihilated them. And this is the first victory for Japanese, uh, in which the Chinese troops had less casualty than the Japanese uh, army. And it also helped boost the confidence in our war against the Japanese. The Communist Party also established bases in the rear of the Japanese. Actually, the Communist Party then wanted to uh, join forces with uh, the Nationalist Party in the battlefields. But the Japanese were so quick that they invaded Shanxi province and a large 
part of Chinese territory. So the Communist Party decided to go to the rear of the enemy. Uh, in the Chinese People's War against the Japanese aggression, there are two battlefields, one for the real battlefields and one uh, behind enemy lines or in the rear of the Japanese enemy. Here we can see pictures of Sichuan, Guangxi, and Yunnan. The troops there applied to go to the front line of the war. And here there is a uh, flag called the, the flag of the character of death. The father of a soldier gave him this flag featuring the character of death in Chinese. The father told his son that I don't want you to come back to uh, care for my elderhood. I want you to fight to death for our nation. So this is to encourage the brave fight of our uh, soldiers. The Japanese army wanted to uh, quickly seize the whole territory of China, so they started the Battle of Songhu or the Battle of Shanghai in August 1937, and they mobilized the air forces too. Uh, in the end, the Chinese army suffered from more casualties than the Japanese army. More than 300,000 Chinese soldiers died in that battle. And there is a movie called Ba Bai that uh, documents the history of this time. Here we can see the picture of the uh, warehouse. Xi Jinyuan was a commander of the Chinese army there. The warehouse or Sihang warehouse was the last part of territory still in the hands of the Chinese. And uh, only 400 the Chinese soldiers were at the warehouse and they claimed there were, there were 800 of them to scare off enemies. A lot of our soldiers were uh, attacked, and uh, some soldiers were taken to do heavy labor, and Xie Jinyuan was uh, killed by Kuomintang. There are four major wars at Shanghai, Taiyuan, Xuzhou, and Wuhan. In the Battle of Xuzhou at Taiyuan, the Chinese army killed more than 10,000 Japanese soldiers, almost a division. This is a picture of Li Zongren, the commander of the Chinese army. So the museum has kept some precious articles and the materials of the history. Yes, this is how we tell the story and the history. Apart from the troops, the whole society, the commoners were also doing everything they can. Uh, it's a picture of children donating uh, their pocket money, his pocket money, and this is a picture showing the couplets of a household. This couplet features how the Chinese, pe Chinese people would like to achieve victory against the Japanese aggression. 
There were also a lot of magazines and uh, journals featuring this history. Yes, a lot of artists created uh, artworks. And this is a disc with the earliest version of our national anthem. It was a theme song composed by Ni'ar. Uh, this is this is a record from Paul Robson. He was sympathetic with the Chinese people's suffering. At that time, a lot of artists also joined our fight against Japanese aggression. A lot of people are fleeing to were fleeing to Hong Kong. Um, personalities like Zhou Taofen started newspapers and magazines in Hong Kong that recorded this history. The Portuguese government in Macau was afraid that uh, was afraid of the Japanese army, so they helped the Chinese in the name of disaster relief. So people across the world were united. Uh, yes, uh, this picture shows you uh, how overseas Chinese were united. Yeah, those pictures are very commemorative of the history. Here, there is something that you must be very familiar with. Uh, it's a picture showing the cave dwelling Yan. Several months into the war, some people thought we could uh, win the war with the help from UK, US, and even the former Soviet Union.
。全文其实其实只有五万多字啊，但是内容内容非常的全面，非常的深刻。But uh, Mao Zedong had different thoughts. Uh, he wrote an article on a prolonged warfare with the Japanese, protracted war with the Japanese. Yeah, the article was uh, rich in content. It introduced the different stages of our war. This is uh, uh, Malta, the communist forces used to defeat Japanese army. This is something to put on the back of the horse to train. 而且其中呢，很多的战果，我们看是破坏啊，破坏公路、铁路加起来，呃，一千九百将近两千公里，呃，让日军的这个交通线呢几近瘫痪。那边还有一张彭德怀，是不是？呃，对，下方这个彭德怀，我们这个摄像镜头的下方可以看到，这是八路军副总司令彭德怀当时亲临前线指挥的情景。呃，据说这个战斗的时候呢，他离前线只有五百米的距离。啊，五百米的距离。这张照片是由这个著名摄影师徐肖冰拍摄的。好，我们来往这边。好，我要看一下这边。对，因为时间呃比较有限哈、啊，挑一些重要的内容啊，大家想要全面的来参观我们的展览。Time is limited, so I'll only show you the important stuff. If you want to have a full picture of the exhibition here, you uh, you can visit our museum in person. You are very welcome. Here we can see the guerrilla operations in flexible forms. I remember that before 2015, I visited the museum once. At that time, there was a 3D projection of a war. It uh, was a representation of our uh, our fight against the Japanese aggression. Uh, it was a holographic presentation, but uh, in this version of the exhibition, oh, we have removed such uh, presentation. And we are showing you with a um, mimicked landscape. So the Chinese people then were using their wisdom to fight the Japanese. Uh, at the time, the Chinese people started a tunnel warfare against the Japanese. They designed tunnels uh, in very uh, with their wonderful wisdom. With a blockade of the Japanese army, our battlefields in the rear of the Japanese suffered great lack of resources and supplies. So uh, Mao Zedong encouraged everyone to uh, be engaged in production. So our soldiers not only need to go fight in the battlefields, they also needed to uh, grow cotton and to work on threads and clothing. So they are capable of fighting and also we uh, win.
呃，这是毛主席啊，给当时中国共产党讲解的一些教训。Uh, Showing soldiers reclaiming wastelands for food production. Ah, 展柜上我们看到这些文物呢，有的是呃在延安整风运动当中的使用的一些文献。呃，整风运动让让全党的思想。The articles here. 在二战期间，中国军队的总伤亡达到了约合十四万人。在二战期间，中国军队的总伤亡达到了约合十四万人。在二战期间，中国军队的总伤亡达到了约合十四万人。在二战期间，中国军队的总伤亡达到了约合十
of heroes that died in the war, uh, altogether 193. And were also models of the medals that were awarded in 1955, uh, celebrating independence and freedom. This is a pagoda mountain. This uh, features the pagoda mountain of Yan'an. And there are also 14 pieces of reliefs here. It symbolizes soldiers and the common people that were fighting the Japanese. And also some workers were transporting supplies to the front line. And even children were contributing. The war of the Chinese people against the Japanese aggression united the whole Chinese nation in an unprecedented way. Then we're coming to part five of the exhibition, uh, the major battlefield in the Orient. The Chinese people's war against uh, Japanese aggression contributed uh, a lot to the world's war, the world's anti-fascist war. And China was also a major battlefield in the world's anti-fascist war. And here we can see uh, the bases in the rear of the Japanese in 1945. There were uh, 19 such bases uh, with an area of 1 million square kilometers. You know, two thirds Japanese army were stranded in the Chinese territory. If China uh, surrendered to the Japanese forces, then the Japanese already in our territory could go to uh, Southeast Asia or go to a former Soviet Union. So uh, China was a great help and a constraint to the Japanese forces so that uh, the Allied forces can concentrate, could concentrate on their own battlefields. And starting from September 18th incident, China started the anti-fascist war. And the 14 years of battle war was the uh, longest uh, compared with other battlefields, other nations. So our war is not only part of the Chinese history, but also um, the world's history and mankind's history. This is also in line with what uh, President Xi Jinping said. The uh, international community has a shared uh, fate. So, uh, in the face of a COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese people actually also uh, rallied their uh, forces. I think the history can give us some uh, thoughts to unite our people. In Sichuan and Yunnan, hundreds of thousands of common people helped with the construction of airports. They didn't have heavy machines. Only human labor was available. This is a minimized version of the actual machine used by them. Um, it wasn't a machine, it was a tool. The two is a collar gun. Uh, it weighs around seven or eight tons. 
they use this to uh, level the field for the airport. Our battle was also supported by the international community. Now we are coming to part six. A just cause gains great support. 500 military consuls came to China from former Soviet Union. Uh, they were called volunteers from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union also uh, provided 170 million US dollars in loans to China. And here is a statue uh, showing a Chinese soldier and a Soviet soldier uh, with a pigeon signifying peace. A lot of Chinese friends came to China, for example, Norman Bethion from Canada, and many international uh, journalists also came to China to cover our uh, fight against the Japanese aggression. In 1943, uh, Italy surrendered. In 1945, Germany uh, surrendered. So Japan was the only one left. Uh, in the Axis uh, in the fascist Axis those uh, imperialists used to have extraordinary privileges in China but after the war uh, some of these privileges were abolished Agreements were signed. Leaders of the Allied forces signed a declaration, a declaration in Cairo, stating that the privileges seized by Japan in China would be abolished and its rule over Taiwan would also be ended. So in this uh, declaration, uh, we can see the rule over Taiwan uh, was returned to China. This is a restoration of the meeting the Communist Party's uh, Seventh oh, National Congress. After 但是在反攻作战过程当中呢其实还出现了一些波动 we all in, in 1944 we also had a major uh, battle in Henan, Hunan and Guizhou and, and Guangxi provinces. 
In the counter-offensives, uh, we also suffered setbacks. The Soviet Union was unable to uh, retrieve the whole of Northeast China, and this resulted in um, some complicated issues afterwards. Uh, the U.S. Uh, threw atomic bombs at uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And later, Japan uh, decided to surrender their emperor, uh, issued a statement. August the 15th was an important day. Uh, this day was actually uh, the day when Japan uh, was defeated. And on this uh, picture, we can see uh, the signing ceremony for allied uh, for allied forces to uh, accept the surrender of the Japanese. Uh, from the arrangement of the seats, we can see the distinguish. Uh, we can see how they distinguished uh, the winners and losers of this war. Yeah, the chairs on the two sides were different. Ones with narrow tables were for the Japanese, and the on the other side was the Allied forces. And uh, they had separate tables at the ceremony when China accepted Japan's surrender.
千四郎还是九十八事变的元凶。这边呢是南京审判这张照片，呃，接受审判的这个战犯啊，他是呃古寿夫，当时日军第六师团的师团长。一九三七年日军制造南京大屠杀的时候，他是第一个带着军队攻进南京城的，所以是南京大屠杀的一个呃主犯，后来在南京被判处死刑，啊，包括在南京举行杀人比赛的。Uh, invade Nanjing city and commit a atrocity there, and he was tried at the uh, military tribunal and executed. This is a picture showing his execution. Uh, in Nanjing, Shenyang, and Taiyuan, there were trials, uh, trials of Japanese uh, militarists. The last part of this exhibition, remembering history, the Ch Chinese people is peace-loving and very tolerant. During wartime, there are a lot of such examples showing uh, the humanity in the Chinese people. This is a picture showing uh, Commander Nie Rongzhen sending a Japanese girl back to Japan. Uh, the Japanese girl, girl was saved during the war, and uh, uh, General Nie Rongzhen said, "We were not at war with uh, common Chinese people, uh, common Japanese people, uh, but the Japanese army. And uh, when the Japanese girl grew up, he came back to show his gratitude. And uh, these are pictures before and after, uh, showing her and uh, General Nie Rongzhen." In the 1950s, China imposed amnesties on a lot of war criminals of Japan and uh, sent them back home. In 1972, the then Japanese Prime Minister visited China and signed uh, a document with Chairman Mao Zedong. That document um, marks the uh, normalization of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Uh, cooperation between the two nations are, can benefit uh, not only the two countries, but also the whole world. In 1995, the then Japanese Prime Minister. The then Japanese Prime Minister uh, Tomichi Murayama visited China and the Museum of the War of the Chinese People's Resistance against the Japanese aggression. He wrote uh, his comments on our message book. Be objective with history and pray for permanent peace and uh, friendship between China and Japan. But there are some forces in Japan that always uh, deny the history and distort the history uh, in their historical textbooks. Some Japanese politicians uh, even paid tribute to war criminals at the Yakusuni Shrine. 
This is a picture taken when the war of Chinese people's resistance against the Japanese aggression was first established in 1987. Our uh, leaders also visited the museum many times. Um, and uh, as September 3rd is approaching, I think there will be some events to honor uh, this anniversary. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Across the whole trip, our biggest impression is that we need to cherish peace. 